Hi Anna, my name is Karen Richardson and I'm 46 years old. Um, I'm a daughter, a wife, a sister, um, but most importantly, I'm a mum to these two little boys right here. And, you know, I, I remember back in the day, um, it took me a long time to fall pregnant with my boys. Um, I had multiple miscarriages and um, wondered, you know, even at some points, am I doing the right thing, bringing children into the world? And, and you know, that was back eight years ago. And now, um, you know, I'm asking that question again, because I, I thought, no, no, you know, I'm going down the wrong path here. Um, you know, the world's going to be a much better place uh, moving forward. And fast forward to 2020, and I can see nothing but a bleak future right now. Um, I am terrified for the future of my children. It's not so much about me. It's not so much about us adults because we have had, you know, a life. Um, but they are purely innocent. I, I have literally spent the last few months shielding them from the, the ridiculous levels of fear that are being pumped out everywhere. I won't take them shopping with me. Thankfully, I've got a wonderful husband who takes that load and, and he does the shopping so that the kids don't have to be confronted with the crazy fear factor that's just being, you know, spewed out in the eyes of people, you know, jumping out your way, um, you know, wearing masks now. I just, I just can't get my head around it. I, I don't understand why people aren't looking at the actual figures. Why aren't they looking at the actual figures and saying, hang on a second, this doesn't warrant what has happened thus far. This doesn't warrant the lockdown. This doesn't warrant mandating masks at the end of a pandemic, at the end. Why isn't anybody asking themselves, oh, so why weren't masks mandated at the peak or at the beginning? Why weren't they mandated then? And we've watched the, the curve decline while people were not wearing masks, right? They weren't wearing masks in the supermarkets. I mean, there was maybe a small percentage, maybe 1% of people were wearing masks in the supermarket before it was man mandatory. And yet the numbers declined while we were all shopping together without masks. All the media, you know, there's even a clip of Dr. Hillary going around, who's, who's the um, puppet on GMTV for the you know, this this narrative, this false narrative saying, oh, it's ridiculous wearing masks because the particles, virus particles are nanoparticles that would just literally sail through the gaps in, 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 in the masks. And, and when you breathe, the air is going to go in the top and underneath and round the sides, unless it's a medical grade, specially fitted virus mask, which none of them are. None of them are that people are wearing. They are just there to perpetuate more and more fear. And I find it terrifying. I find it terrifying that people are just falling into it because they're being told to do it. I'm terrified that this so-called vaccine, and you know, I, I really am angry about this whole labeling of calling people anti-vaxxers because they're using their brains and they're saying, hang on, if all other vaccines take eight to 10 years to develop, why would we want to rush towards one that has been, you know, developed in, in months or maybe a year at the most when it does eventually come to pass? Um, you know, it, it's crazy. The last vaccine um, that was rushed through was the swine flu vaccine. Now, just go and look up uh, swine flu vaccine damage. Just go and look it up. OK, you will see. Um, that mainly people in the NHS were maimed by that particular vaccine. Okay, frontline healthcare workers were the ones who were mainly maimed. And there's been suicides as a result of the, it was narcolepsy, I believe, that it caused. But it caused severe brain damage. Um, you know, some people died from the vaccine. Just investigate these things. I don't understand this whole blinkered attitude and that's what scares me the most. You know, for back in 2017, um, I went through a very, very traumatic period in my life when my mum was in, uh, she, was, she had a very bad head injury and she was in a coma and she was given a 3% chance of coming out alive or um, 
you know, with any kind of brain function. And um, I'm a great believer in the power of healing, in the power of love and power of, you know, that positive loving energy, um, you know, working for people. And this is the direction we all need to go in because what we are witnessing is fear, fear, fear. Fear is a very, very low energetic vibration. Um, and thankfully, uh, because it is a low energetic vibration and it's it's up, it's actually up here um, in your head, you, there is not a big... Um, you know, it it is contagious, but it's not as contagious as actually love is because love comes from the heart and we have a huge magnetic field that comes out from the heart. And this is where we all have to go towards. And, and just to go back to my story, so my mum had this 3% chance of pulling through and we received so much love um, from people. And, you know, I was up seeing her every single day with my dad and she pulled through and she's not 100%, but she's probably about 85, 90% the person, you know, she used to be. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, after my mum came out of hospital, my dad, he had a double pulmonary embolism and blood clots in his heart. And the doctor said on his arrival to the hospital, you should be dead. He shouldn't, you know, once they'd done all the scans and everything, that he should not have even survived the journey. And again, you know, I do believe that, that there is a, a much bigger, bigger power out there looking out for us. Um, and then finally, it was in the, 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 the December of, um, and this was only another few weeks after my dad got out of hospital. It was my little boy who was five years old at the time. And he actually ended up with a ruptured appendix. And, you know, all of them survived. All of them were critical. All of them, you know, at least my mum and dad, you know, they, they should have been, they should have died. Um, and my little boy, um, he was critically ill, you know, critically ill. But thank God, every single one of them has pulled through and they're all fine. But I think about that and I think, what if that had happened now? What if that had happened in, in 2020? Would my mum have just, you know, they'd just, they'd have just switched the ventilator off. I'm absolutely sure of it. They'd have just slammed a DNR on her, and that would have been that. And my dad, he would have been put in a COVID ward because he couldn't breathe, and it wasn't. It was an, it was, you know, a pulmonary embolism, and that probably would have finished him off. And then would I have been able to have been with my little boy in hospital? Now I don't know the answers, and I I don't want to put a slight on healthcare workers because I know the people, every single one of them, they're, they're beautiful people for them, you know, the majority, the huge majority are wonderful people and they go into the profession because they care and because they want to heal. But what's happening is compromising them. It's, you know, putting them in, in difficult positions, but they, they've got to come forward and speak out because what's happening isn't going to impact just us and our families. It's going to be your families. And I'm talking to all frontline workers, like the police, the police. Are you going to enforce those new laws? Because your child has suspected COVID at school, are you going to be the one to come down and take them into quarantine away from their family? T terrified child who's then going to go into care. Are you going to do that? Or are you actually going to stand up and say, it's rubbish, it's bullshit. I'm not saying there isn't a virus, but what I am saying, the numbers don't add up. The numbers don't add up. These cases that you're seeing, there's it's more tests. The PCR test doesn't even test for COVID, it tests for coronavirus, which is also the common cold and other flu bugs. I just hope to God people start to see what is happening here just by looking, not going down any conspiracy theories, just look at the figures and start questioning why this is happening because there's no justification for it and Sweden proves that. No justification for it. It's less deadly than, you know, the flu and in 2018 it was far worse with a flu um, epidemic that nobody knew about and nobody was scared of because you weren't told to be. Coming back to love, we've got to come back to our hearts. We've got to come back to our hearts and we've got to come back to compassion and you've got to start seeing actually from your heart because it was that that told me things were wrong. Um, you know, it didn't take someone else to tell me. I intuitively knew something was very, very off with this whole thing. 
And, you know, I saw someone else say the words conscious revolution. Yes, that's exactly what has to happen here. You know, we can't, we're not going to do this with hate and with violence and with pointing at other people and calling them names, you know, whatever uh, place they are at, you know, you've got to remember they're stuck in fear. And that's a horrible place to be. I was there for years myself until I realised it wasn't real. And when you realise that the fear isn't real and that what we're being told isn't real, that's when you'll start to wake up and, and see the truth. Um, but yes, we need we need people to start standing up, especially frontline workers, especially NHS, police, military, you know, you're the people who are going to be expected to carry out all the dirty deeds of these these um, rushed vaccinations of these, um, you know, taking people into custody for not wearing masks, maybe, or, you know, um, taking children away from their families. Can you really do that? Can you live with yourself and do that? And can you then accept that if you're doing that to someone else, someone might do it to you as well? Please, I beg, the sake of the kids everywhere, please just start looking beyond the media and what they're telling you and the government and what they're telling you. I don't know why they're doing it, but it's not about the virus. That I do know. You know, I have my own theories. I'm not going to go into that now because it's irrelevant. The fact is it's happening and that's the truth. And we need to stand up together. If enough of us stand up and say no, and we just have to stand up with peace and love in our hearts and compassion and say no. Not me, not my child, not that person's child, not any children should have to grow up in this world of fear, control, dictatorship. None of them. So that's really what I want to say. I didn't know quite how I was going to say it until it came out. So thank you for listening. And um, I just pray someone watches this and it, it just triggers something inside of them.